biometric voter registration ends at selected regional offices of the Electoral Commission. Western Region Office of Electoral Commission suspends pilot voter registration due to malfunctioning machines. Victims of June 3 fire and flood disaster at the Kwame Krumah Circle still waiting for compensation five years on. And coronavirus cases in Cameroon after government reopened schools. Welcome to the studios of GBC News and GTV. It's time for some news. I'm Akushika Akwe. And I am Nii Odate Lamte. Jonathan and Tim Dakon will translate the news in sign language, which you can watch live on our Facebook page or at www.gbcghanaonline.com or on DSTV's channel 278. It's the fifth anniversary of the June 3rd flood and fire disaster at the then Kwame Nkrumah Circle in Accra. The twin disaster claimed more than 150 lives and left scores injured with some still nursing injuries. At the time, a shaking nation made promises to prioritize sanitation and ensure the proper planning of the city. It's five years on and as the world battles another disaster, the COVID-19 pandemic, the country is still dealing with the issue of flooding mainly due to human activity. Flooding remains a yearly experience and every year since the June 3rd disaster, when the rain set in, the floods return with a vengeance, especially in the country's capital, Accra. A year after the disaster, in 2015, the Accra Metropolitan Assembly, AMA, announced that about 70% of work required to resolve the flooding situation for Accra had been completed. But residents of Adabraka and Kruma Circle areas were again affected by floods. In 2018, a 32-year-old medical doctor at the Ridge Hospital drowned in her car at the Teshi Bush Road near the Demo Bridge in floodwaters. Six others also died that day. The situation was virtually the same in 2019. The 2020 first rainy season is here with us and flooding has not gone away. Areas like Wager, the Kaswa Main Bridge and Medina Redco have taken a battering from the raging floodwaters. Although June 3rd will not be commemorated on a large scale due to the coronavirus pandemic, the disaster that occurred five years ago in 2015 is a constant reminder of our poor drainage systems. The problems include the indiscriminate dumping of waste into waterways, the low elevation of settlements and building in waterways which continue to cause damage to millions of property and destroys lives. The Western Region Office of the Electoral Commission on Wednesday suspended the pilot's voter registration exercise following the malfunctioning of biometric voter registration machines. 23 people were registered on Tuesday when the two-day exercise began to test the efficiency of the system, particularly via BVR machines. However, on Wednesday, the exercise was not smooth following the malfunctioning of the BVR machines. Officials of the EC explained that the machines were unable to be powered, compelling them to pack up without being able to register a single person. People who had thronged the officers to take part in the pilot registration had no choice than to leave. However, representatives of political parties, namely the NPP and the NDC, and some media personnel awaited to hear officially from the EC. The Western Regional Director of the EC, Mrs. Angelina Tego, was not in the office to respond to their queries. Now to the Volta region. The Electoral Commission's pilot biometric voter registration exercise ended today. The EC says the exercise was to test their new system to help identify major challenges and address them. On the first day in the Volta region, patronage was low. The Volta region's pilot exercise took place at the Commission's regional office at Ho, the Volta regional capital. There were political party representatives as well as police personnel to ensure an incident-free exercise. 
The exercise on Tuesday started at about 8.15 in the morning with low patronage. The GBC News team observed that not all measures were in place in compliance with the announced safety measures to prevent the spread of the coronavirus. As at the time of compiling this report, no member of the public had come to observe and participate in the exercise. People who underwent or participated in the pilot exercise were political party representatives and journalists. Representatives from the NPP and the NDC political parties shared their observations with GBC News. When you come to do the registration, they will actually check your temperature and see whether you show symptoms. Definitely, you will be taken away uh, to an isolation center. The processes that you go through, capturing your finger and then your fingers and then that of your the official has, has improved. Uh, the scanners, you can see that they have high resolution. Uh, immediately you place your fingers on it. It takes on like first where you have to adjust. Sometimes you have to watch one several. This one is just big. And in Ashanti, the exercise also ended today. All safety protocols were being observed, were observed, I should say, as suspected to control the spread of the coronavirus. The Ashanti Regional Director of the Electoral Commission, Mr. Benjamin Banobiu, said all Ghanaian citizens 18 years and above and of sound mind are expected to register where they reside when the exercise begins with either a Ghanaian passport or Ghana card as proof of identification or have two guarantors who have already registered as voters. He said all safety measures will be in place countrywide and applicants are expected to wear nose masks to the registration centers. We want people to come and see how the process Will go. We want to see how our machines, our kit, will perform. Then we also want to see if there are anything that we need to do in terms of improvement to ensure the success of the program. And the Electoral Commission, being aware of the area in which we all find ourselves, have also put in place strategies to ensure that. The exercise will not only become successful, but we also ensure that there is no transmission of COVID-19 to our uh, cherished citizens who will come out to register. The NDC representative, Alhaji Inusa, was not happy with the entire process from the safety protocol measures to the final stage of registration. His complaint was about the wearing of gloves, as well as the absence of social distancing. An applicant takes between 8 to 10 minutes to complete the process. We've seen a lot of lapses here, right from the beginning to the end. And I think uh, the party will at the appropriate time um, put together our advices and then we submit to the regional EC. Other observers including prospective applicants had a different opinion about the exercise. In the eastern region also the two-day nationwide pilot voter registration exercise conducted by the Electoral Commission ended successfully today. The news team observed that all the procedures that a voter is required to go through to register were followed. Political party representatives were also around to observe the exercise. The Eastern Regional Director of the Electoral Commission, Madame Faith Amedeke, who gave an overview of the exercise, said they had not encountered any challenge. Uh, yesterday, we started, it went on smoothly. We invited the political party leadership. They came to take part in the exercise and everything went on successfully. We registered a little over 50 applicants and today we are here to continue. We have also set up our protocol measures by allowing people to wash their hands. We use the thermometer gun before you enter the queue and they will take you through the registration process. In fact, this is simulation. So we tested all the 
various scenarios. People came in to guarantee for others because they didn't have the passports and then the Ghana card. Some of the electorate spoke to GBC News. I got here around 11:55 um, and um, I was taken to the protocols, observing all the um, protocols as well. And um, I went to the festival. I filled the forms and I was told to go to the next one to enter my details. So after entering the details, I took my picture there. They took. Um, my fingerprint and after I came to sit here and I asked why this process and I was like it was a, a pilot project that they are doing and uh, so after I came to the last man gentleman there and uh, he gave me my card and I went to fill my form after that I went to take my pictures then I went to collect my card that's one. oh it's nice it's okay yes so the machine only the machine is slow 154 people died in the flood and fire disaster at the Kwame Nkrumah Circle in Accra on the 3rd of June in 2015. Others sustained life-altering injuries and properties worth millions were destroyed. Five years on, survivors are still appealing to government for the promised compensation. It all seems surreal, but Mr. Silas Odro survived that fateful night. Recounting the event, he said it was the hand of God that saved them that night. The teaching is only one. Ne a soon can be seen. I feel the abomin a mamma swa, ne the megulum, a mamma said the megulum, to me the American say, a radius with Jim and consent to me. So, yes, I may come in, ne a soon a good so air air bombing in power for me, we are more now as I did than a minimum. It tell me you come in more because you will young cinema. It me two on one, not for the Mekwa and Emco. And also, Empire and Amir Bonner, and this man who the area will be so men, sir, and the Mipia, the Afrika, with the Mugula Moa Kusi, Avena Johnson. It is Hona, Kakra, and to be doing on my Emily, it is Michel and Hot to was Afrika, the DBC Biano. And see, see, we now back right, and Yamia Domin, you say, I'm a Benjamin. And I crack, I'm a common anymore, and a minia, because I'm not me, who you know if he not my prayer, my mom would ya cry, yeah, you're my honor, me, I did. Another survivor, Mr. Francis Apia, said life has not been easy since most of them lost their livelihoods because it took months to recover. I didn't know how to get my papa. But I papa so I papa so I was 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 so I Mr. Isil, a taxi driver at the time, said although some survivors received some financial compensation, it was all used up to pay for hospital bills. Yeah, you pay 15, and you pay me. No, you pay for it. Each person pay 10,000. So, I'm going to pay for it. They are appealing to the government to make good the promised compensation so they can get their lives back on track. The answer me now say yes, re. Ghana by any Ghana penny for. In your market, Saka Saka sell more Ghana has a still a June 34 year break. I am young, quite 68 people's yeah, now year break. In here, I buy no more. And now, concrete beer or more Ghana has asked some wedding. It's see ya, oh, she be beer, yes, Reno. Say, and we be able to meet your boy and be a no, and for more boy, na ye break. They said. All meaning Ghanaians able and willing to support them should bring their donations to GBC as some fraudulent people have created groups in their names to collect donations from people. Ghana's COVID-19 case count now stands at 8,548 with 3,132 recoveries. 38 people with various underlying conditions have died. 
bringing the country's active cases with a subtraction of recoveries and deaths from confirmed cases to 5,378. Now we're taking you to Sunyai, where the results of 130 outstanding suspected COVID-19 samples will determine whether the Bono region has been successful in its efforts to prevent its first case of COVID-19 from spreading. After 178 contacts traced and tested for COVID-19, from the first case in Sampa in Jaima North, 48 came back negative. Deputy Director in Charge of Public Health of the Ghana Health Service in Bono Region, Dr. John Otu, who gave the details, said the outstanding results should be ready soon. The 178 contacts traced by the Ghana Health Service in the Bono region from its first case in Sampa in the Jama North District were mostly from Sampa and Brekum. The results of these are still not all in. Dr. John Otsu is a deputy director in charge of public health of the Ghana Health Service in the Bono region. The only way you can identify the cases is to test everybody. I mean, test them. And we know that it comes with a huge resource implication. Okay, but the question is, what do you want for yourself? The tricky thing is that it is it's still a novel virus. The effect of the virus on humans is still not well understood. He said the Ghana Health Service continues to educate the public on how to keep safe and urge or to strictly adhere to the COVID-19 preventive measures. Dr. Otu was not in support of the easing of restrictions. He called for caution as in the absence of a vaccine for COVID-19, identifying infected people and isolating them was difficult. He said it was important to practice social distancing, personal hygiene and wear face masks and stop large social gatherings. A new virus we don't know much about, and so we all need to um, take the responsibility and protect ourselves and our loved ones from getting affected. Dr. Otu stressed that the front line of the war against COVID 19 is still right at our doorsteps, so it is safest for all to stay home as much as they can. Some members of parliament are pushing for a total shutdown of the house through parliamentary business to stem the spread of the virus. Their call follows news of some MPs and parliamentary staff contracting the virus after a mass testing exercise weeks ago. However, the majority chief whip, Mr. Matthew Nindam, says the house will not shut down and insists work of the house will continue as planned. Parliament will not close. Parliament will continue to sit. We have sat them one when even this COVID started. And we've been sitting. Are you getting me? What we need to do is to observe our social distancing. Now when you go to the chamber, we've tried as whips to make sure that people don't close to each other. Everybody. When you think business is not too busy, you can go to your office, you can be at a coffee shop, you can do whatever you want to do. But for Parliament to say we are closing, we haven't gotten there. And I don't think we will get there. We will do our business. We are supposed to rise somewhere August, and we intend to do that. We've recorded about 8,290-something. All these human beings are from one department or the other. Okay? Some are ministers. Some are MPs. Some are media guys. Some are from Adum. Some from, are from city. All these places, you people are operating. You haven't closed. So parliament will not close. Parliament will work. That is the decision that we have taken. And despite the government's securing of a strategic partner for the Commander Sugar Factory, the machines may not start running anytime soon. The problem is the COVID-19 pandemic, which is restricting foreign travel. However, Minister for Trade and Industry, Mr. Alan Chermatin, is confident life will soon return to the Commander Sugar Factory once life returns to normal. The Minister was responding to questions on the floor of Parliament by MP4 Chiponi, Mr. Samuel Jabaniti, on the status of the Commander Sugar Factory, a report by Clara Mlano. 
Tech Ghana is the new strategic investor partnering government to breathe life back into the defunct Commander Sugar Factory. Pak Agrotech Ghana, with support from STM Project, an Indian-based company with expertise in sugar mills and plantations across the world, will inject $28 million in capital expenditure and working capital for the first three years. Also, the investors will pay an annual concession fee of $3.3 million for 15 years. Yes. The agreement, Mr. Speaker, will be effective upon completion of conditions precedent, which include the approval of the agreement by this August House. The required documentation, Mr. Speaker, will be brought before this House in due course. Mr. Speaker, during the final negotiations, it became necessary for action on the implementation of the project to be delayed until the finalization of the national sugar policy, which was intended to provide a strategic policy framework for the implementation of the project. I wish to assure this August House that as soon as the restrictions on foreign travels arising from the COVID-19 pandemic is lifted, and after all the necessary and relevant protocols and approvals have been secured, the technical partners of Park Agrotech will begin a comprehensive program of action to bring the Commander Sugar Factory back to life. This will bring prosperity to the people of Commander and its adjoining communities. It cost $35 million to build the Comenda Sugar Factory with funds from an Indian Exim Bank facility. It was inaugurated by then President John Mahama in May 2016, but was locked up after a few test runs. Pak Agrotech is a company incorporated and operating in Ghana. Also on the floor of Parliament on Wednesday was the Minister for the Interior, Mr. Ambrose Derry. He outlined measures in place to prevent the further import and management of the coronavirus from neighboring countries, Burkina Faso and Togo. The government has set up a multi-agency tax force made up of the Ghana Armed Forces, the Ghana Police Service, and the Bureau of National Investigations to assist the lead agency at the borders, the Ghana Immigration Service, in the protection of our borders by increasing their physical presence and patrols along both the approved and unapproved routes SNAP and inland checkpoints have also been mounted to strategic, at strategic locations in the country to intercept persons who would have illegally crossed the borders from unapproved routes without the Ghana Immigration Service presence. By the end of September this year, Achimesium in the Kwabibrim district of the eastern region will have an information and communication technology center. 29 more of such centers will be constructed in other districts in the country. Once you cut the sort for work to begin on the center, Minister for Communications, Mrs. Esla Uswe Kufu said the project is in line with government's objective of making information and communication technology ICT accessible to all. It is the plan of the government to ensure that all areas in the country benefit from an information communication technology center. This is because ICT can complement, enrich and transform education. Technology can ensure universal access to education, bridge learning divides and also improve on the quality and relevance of learning. That's not all, it can accelerate progress towards achieving some of the sustainable development goals. The centers will also provide business services and community-tailored development information to the various communities. They will be equipped and managed by the Ghana Investment Fund for Electronic Communication, GIFEC. There are already 241 community ICT centers in operation in other districts 
within the country the assume hene or sabari manana of fosu hene a painting commended the government's efforts to narrow the digital divide say papa hey on one for be mapa nana do down kwa or see say school hey and here dear that's all about buama what boss go home by what my ass it is a on those of them be as on to a nyata and on and then in a pump on so yeah we didn't hear that i see baby Minister for Communications, Mrs. Esla Owusu-Ekufo, said her ministry through GIFEC is expanding ICT infrastructure and services to underserved communities across the country through the various universal access programs and projects. She stressed on the importance of ICT, as has been clearly demonstrated in this period of COVID-19. This period has taught us that without ICT, it is not possible to stay safely connected today. The government of Nanaru Dankwe Kufuadu is determined to fully utilize our Universal Service Fund to promote digital inclusion in Ghana. Within the next 18 to 24 months, we will provide connectivity to all the remaining unserved and underserved communities through the expanded rural telephony project which will cover over 2,000 communities across the country. We are determined to leave no one behind. She pleaded with the beneficiary communities to own the project and ensure its full utilization. Siboga Tanga now, a 35-year-old Madame Joyce Ayimbere is appealing to the general public, benevolent organizations and other corporate institutions to support her raise 54,394 Ghana cities for surgery on her weight. Madame Ayimbere, a mother of three, was diagnosed of a spinal disorder at the Focus Orthopedic Hospital in Accra. Explaining her condition, Madame Ayimbere's physician, Dr. Amatepe Mauli Kwame said, spondylolisthesis is a spinal disorder where a bone or vertebra slips forward onto the bone below it. She said the problem started with pain in her waist. Madame Ayambiri says she's been to St. John of God Hospital in Diayao Nkwanta, Konfua Noche Teaching Hospital in Kumasi, and finally ended up at the Focus Orthopedic Hospital in Accra on 3rd February 2020. Doctors there say if the spondylolisthesis is left untreated, it can weaken the vertebra and make it unable to maintain its proper position in the spine. Madame Ayambiri is therefore appealing to all to support her raise the 54,394 Ghana cities for corrective surgery. Ghana mine in Miss Ramo, Miala and Bay, about 2015, my Nanti Musa, my course of Petri, Missica by new animal for a mom boy me is here my nanti sa my kudrun kana and kana na mo so mbe ti ma ye na si kana o mde ma me no o hon wadde che me doktor ni suka che me se e drebi e nu o mde ba ma ma anu ma ma yale na ko this operation na na mbe ye me inti me sira gana ma in for ene nu enu mi ma me for mom boy me all donations can be sent via mobile money number 054-034-8342 And you're watching GBC News ahead with for business, energy, sports, and foreign. We'll be right back. It's JTP, the name behind authentic and original Ghanaian textile prints, and West Africa's leading print and textile brand. Step out in style in any GTP fabric. Classy, head turning, elegant, snazzy. GBC newscasters are clothed by GTP. The outfits are designed by Joanna Fashions, Nyaniba Estates, B Vogue and Designs, Kaswa, and Alan David Collections, Havana in Accra. <laughs> Still
Celticum Lyme is being attested to as a potent cure for the COVID-19 coronavirus. According to the leader of the Calvary Cross Crescent National Church, Madame Faith Amewodo, the Lord revealed this edible fruit to her after a series of fasting periods. She is therefore calling on the Ministry of Health to make it a part of Ghana's COVID-19 treatment regimen.